Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. You are listening to The Brilliance Business Show. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. Conversations with leading experts in business. And today I have a wonderful guest, Marie Diamond. Marie is a global transformational teacher, author, and known for being a star of the secret movie, a very, very well-known personal development movie. And our topic today is the law of brand attraction. Marie, welcome to the Brilliance Business Show. Thank you so much, Mark. So happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to a conversation with you today, Marie. Before I get started, I just need to make a legal disclaimer that Marie is not offering legal advice or legal assistance. So let's get started with the show. Marie, could you share with our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, of course. Um, So I'm already 25 years in the self-help movement. And so I share um, information about the law of attraction, um, meditation, dowsing, feng shui. I'm a master in these fields, um, trained by, you know, well-renowned masters of feng shui and dowsing. And I use this information... Uh, to reach millions of people. So far, we have reached more than 500 million people, also including with movies like uh, The Secret, How to Become Things, Beyond the Secret, and 10 more other uh, movies. I also have bestsellers like Transform Your Life, the Energy Number Book, international bestselling books. And of course, I'm co-authoring The Law of Branding Attraction with Sami Blendwell. And so um, I work with individuals, um, mentoring, consulting, also with top companies, 500 fortune companies. I've worked with governments. Um, I work with a lot of celebrity clients to help them actually, you know, to help their personal growth, but also to help their business. Um, Because I have a background as a lawyer and um, I've done also um, a lot of management studies and I have myself a very successful business. And so I advise a lot of people how to create conscious business um, and creating a conscious brand. And so that is why I'm in the law of branding attraction in the book also. Yes, and it makes total sense, Marie, because you have a lot of things going on, lots of different projects, and branding is so, so important, isn't it, to get the right message, to be perceived correctly, to then to attract those clients. And when you have so many different projects like yourself, branding must be a key, key part of that. Am I correct, Marie? Yes, it is. Um, You need to really know very uh, clearly what's your message in the world. Um, And for me, I use a lot of what I call energetic branding based on your uh, birthday. So that's kind of the way I create energetic branding. Um, And it's based on feng shui, really, Um, knowing what are the best colors for you. So that energizing your brand is very important, making sure that the key values, the key uh, messages you're bringing are in alignment with your core energy. And then keep using that um, till, you know, people really get your brand. But also you have to live your brand. It's not just, you know, all the graphic designs. Uh, You have to live your brand. And so that, in like what we would say, you have to walk your talk, right? So that people start trusting your brand because what you're putting out there is in alignment with who you are. And so that every product, every service, um, we have a few key points that we're always looking at um, is that um, 
the three key values of my branding is love, first of all. So making sure there is an energy of love in my products and services and that people feel loved by what I do and they will spread this love. So that's like the first key factor. The second one is um, making an impact. So is this what we're bringing, really creating a positive impact to people? And the third one is bringing enlightenment. So uplift people, um, bring light in their lives with my products and services. So these are the three aspects. So that means each time we are coming forward with a new product, a new service, a new way of uh, programming, um, a website, uh, you know, flyers, whatever it is, we always go back all these three key points in there or their um, presence. Will that make a positive impact? Will they feel the love? Will they uh, feel uplifted? I do. So you have to keep really focusing always on the your key aspects. And so when I'm then, you know, physically with my clients or my um, customers, um, if that's personal or professional, corporate, um, they have to feel that that love. You know, they have to feel that you're there with love for them. You know, your heart is in it, right? It's not just your mind, but your heart is in it. And then, you know, you want to also make sure that there is a positive impact. Um, towards what you're bringing and that they're feeling uplifted. So these are questions definitely in the survey always asked, like, you know, you felt you were taken care of, you were, you felt uplifted, you felt um, it could be inspired. You could feel that there was a positive impact from what you were doing. And because of that, you are continuing a, a movement of energy because branding is about, spreading an energy field of who you are and what you bring. And so that, you know, when people come to me and sometimes new clients or, you know, publishing companies or, or you know, I was just talking to somebody this morning that represents one of my major clients. And she was like, oh, yes, we love you. You know, the fact that we they say the word loved and I know, OK, uh, they got the message somehow. And somebody else yesterday said, I, we feel so inspired by you. You always inspire us to go to the next level. I'm like, OK, they got the brand because if they, their feedback is exactly that, um, it means that they feel the alignment in what you're bringing. And even if that's yes, there was a corporate client right? And today was a publishing company. So it doesn't matter who they are, but they feel that energy flow, that movement of energy that your brand is bringing. Because a brand is not just something on paper. It is a living energy. It's like almost a living uh, identity. And so if you just think, oh, this just gives me a branding identity, and I will get somewhere. It's it's not enough. It is. It must be a living vibration, so that everything you do, everything you bring, is infused with that living energy. I agree with so so many points there. You touched on so so many points, but a word that kept kept on coming out a lot was love. And now for me, love is a great value to have in your in your value systems. And when you're coming from a place of love, everything seems to happen. Magic happens. Also, Marie, you mentioned a little bit about colour there, which I think it is important. Colour is important with brands because certain colours you may want to avoid for your own brand. How much time do you spend on colours for your branding? Well, because for me, colours are an expression of energy. Yeah, so they're not just colours. There's an expression of what you want to accomplish. So, And then there are different systems out there about colours. But first of all, I always would love to connect in with a color that is close to who I am, right? When people come up with colors, like I was yesterday talking to a corporate uh, entity and they were like bringing all this violets. Uh, there were, everything was with violet. And I said to this owner, I said, are you ever wearing violet? And he said, no, never. And I said, well, then violet is not a color for you. You know, it has to kind of 
connect with you, like my colors are white, gold, blues, and rose. But these are typically colors I would wear, right? So it is like yes. um, if I'm going somewhere, right? So people are like, oh, yeah, that's Marie. Yeah, she wearing white and gold and, and, and pink. I mean, it's like, or she wears darker blue and, and, and gold. I mean, there's an alignment with my presentation, my visibility when I'm in the world. They, they see it is aligned with whatever I bring. But, you know, there is... Um, I have a book out called Transform Your Life, and that's going over 24 conscious colors, you know, colors that create transformation. And so, but based on your birthday, and you can go to the website and get your free energy report, you will see then what's your energy number, but every energy number based on your birthday, and there's like nine archetypes, has a different combination of colors that really work well with you. So, White, gold, and blue, and rose are very good for my success, yeah, especially because I bring wisdom uh, to the world. So if I would bring health, I would probably add another color to it. So these are conscious colors that and they're not connected with the with the ego. These are colors that are connected with your soul vibration, what your your sole purpose is bringing into the world. And so you can actually find that out, uh, what works for you. And so that's actually a really great combination to work with your energy number, free report, and the book Transform Your Life, because I talk about the colors, what they exactly mean. And w once people become aware of what a color mean, uh, means, then it's possible to say, like, yeah, but... Literally, for example, yesterday, the company I was working with um, is doing spirits. You know, I mean, you know, uh, vodka, gin, you know, cocktails. So, um, and I said, but violet means the highest wisdom. It means you're able to let go of anything that holds you back. It's it's the power of forgiveness. I felt like that didn't really work with vodka and gin, to be honest, you know. <laughs> so... Um, well, definitely you can relax, but relaxation would be a different color I would use then. So, and they're like, yeah, it's interesting since we use this color or this this brand that I'm promoting is not doing so well. So, yeah, it's it's just these are conscious colors that people in their subconscious know if it's right or is it wrong, right, for a brand. So a color change can be amazing. You know, a, a branding color can be totally aligned. But if, you know, I was just talking to a restaurant also yesterday. And so she had like a logo made for her brand, her new restaurant with reds, right? And and I said to her, but do you like reds? And she's like, oh, I don't like reds. But, you know, the graphic designer came up with that. I thought that would be really great. I said, yeah, but you're the one in the restaurant. You're the one that has to give up the flyers, that has to represent that brand. I mean, if that doesn't work, that color with you, I said, no, I love dark blue, like a beautiful blue. I said, well, ask him to do blue and gold. And so she did, like, oh, my God, I love it. But your graphic designer said, I said, don't listen to your graphic designer always. <laughs> they are here to support you. But you have to feel it ultimately like I'm the one. Because, you know, when you're representing a brand and you own a brand, you have to be the one that is also the most commercial voice for that brand, yeah? And then when you have to give something, but it just doesn't fit, right, um, with your style, right? And so I know sometimes, you know, designers will create a mood board. Like recently somebody gave me a mood board and, like, they wanted to try something out with me and they gave me a mood board. And I was like, Ooh, really, this is so opposite who I am, right? So um, I said, you don't get it. You haven't done the research. Like, who is that person? It was so bland, so, you know, white uh, is okay, but there were like browns and beiges and it was so, and grays, it was so boring. I'm like, hey, I'm a very enthusiastic person. So I'm like passionate. I'm like, oh my God, I just get, you know, not just a good goosebumps when I look at it. So it's like you have to think I'm the commercial voice of my brand. And so whenever you're presenting something, words, uh, the message from your brand, your colors, the presentation, whatever you're bringing to express your brand, 
And if you look at it and there's a little pit in your stomach that says, oh, I don't really like it, then don't do it. Because like I said, you're the first one that needs to express the commercial aspects of that brand by talking about your products and here's my flyer and here is my book and here is this. And if it doesn't fit for you, people will feel it. Subconsciously, they will pick it up and they will not buy. You have made some really, really important points there. With my brand, I always try and stick with blue, which is my favourite colour. I wear it all of the time. It's used on so many different things. And you spoke about the colour red as well and the subconscious mind with colours, which is so true, Marie, because some people might see the colour red as a colour of danger, whereas other people might see it as a colour of to take action. I know if you want people to take action, sometimes red is a good colour to use, but it could be seen as a colour of danger. So it is so important to choose your colours correctly. So you are making some really, really valid points there and really well said. Now, Marie, before we get on to the amazing new book that you are part of, The Law of Brand Attraction with Sammy Blindell, I would just like to talk a little bit more about you and the product and the service you provide to your clients. Can you tell us a little bit about the product, the service and how you serve your customers? Of course. So, um, first of all, there's a lot of online, right? Because I've always thought when I was thinking about my customers, I look at a level like, like a pyramid system. And so the, the top of the pyramid are the people that are um, high-end clients, right, that can really pay for your time. Um, they are your bespoke uh, clients. They are the, the clients that are celebrities and CEOs and co companies. Um, and they have a whole other budget, let's put it this way. And then you always have, you know, the middle of the um the pyramid, um, these are people that are, you know, they want to engage more um, because they have literally, um, you know, some extra budget to uh, empower themselves to grow and they can be coming to uh, programs in person um, or like online. And then you always have the bottom of the pyramid where there are some people that do not have budget yet to really get empowered, but they need some information too. So, um, so for that reason, I have a lot of uh, free uh, resources. Like if it's on YouTube, there's a lot of videos they can watch. It can can go on my YouTube channel where I talk about feng shui and law of attraction and empowerment um, and. They also have lots of things that you can go to my, my Instagram, Marie right, Diamond 8, where there's twice or three times a week, even tips and videos so that people can step up in the way they can with free resources and also on the website and the blog. I mean, there's several aspects of that. And what I ultimately want is to bring people to enlightenment. I want to bring them to a new level of themselves, uh, a new conscious level of themselves. And so... Um, I use aspects, um, three aspects for that. The first one is to really work with their soul um, through meditation. So for me, I have a whole line about inner diamond meditation where I teach people in a very practical way. I'm, I'm a very practical woman. I'm a lawyer from background, so I, I think very analytical in many ways. Uh, to really connect in with the intuition and to receive more um, that higher consciousness that they are and to really implement that more in their daily life. So we have many students that are just following the inner diamonds meditation. And then um, I have seen also that there's a second aspect, of course, that we call more the human aspect and is how do you um, think, how do you feel, what do you do? And so what thoughts do you have? What um, feelings do you have and what actions do you take? And so on that level, we uh, we have 
a lot of uh, coaching. So you have a whole team of coaching client, a coaching team that helps people through that experience. So I trained my coaches to help people for that. And on personal level, I do a lot of mentoring with people because I have um, over the years really um, understood um, just by listening to people where their blockages are and to, to see what's going on. Even if I look at a company or as a presentation or a book, I, you know, I've worked with so many um, business people, thousands of business people and authors. And so they bring me their information and I see right away, like, this is a blockage. This is what you have to change. So your thought process is not good. Your mindset, your feelings about it are not good. So I'm very quick in um, finding that out. And that's on a mentoring by basis uh, or a consulting level. And then I also have seen there's a third aspect where I work on, and that's the environment. And so myself as a business manager, when I was working for um, the Belgian and the European governments, I um, started really implementing um, how my environment, your office, has to be really strong uh, representing your brand. If your environment is not representing your brand, then literally your brand will not go, go out in the world. So I started um, studying feng shui and dowsing. And a lot of my clients go online and get the online programs and uh, go to certification programs for that, both on feng shui and dowsing. So they really understand uh, and they can implement it themselves. But of course, I do also a lot of consulting on that for my high-end clients, for corporate world, for um, because sometimes the problem is not in the mindset, but the problem is in the environment. And so the way people have positioned themselves, how they position their teams. And so, and I also use this knowledge to look at the brand and the brand colors and the brand rep representation. So, I love the brand that you have built, Marie, and it's very well known. You're a global superstar. And what really stood out to me there, and this is about building a great brand, was that pyramid system because you are serving all the people that want serving in your network, you're not leaving people out. So at the top, you've got the premium clients that really can afford you and really can do the deeper work. But then you have the middle section and the lower section. So even if people have not got that budget right now, but they still want to learn from you, they have still got those resources and I am sure great brands always provide to all of their network, even for those people that can't afford it. And who knows at a later date, the people at the bottom of the pyramid will work up to the middle section and eventually want you on that one on one basis. But that is a key part of branding, Marie, what you touched on there, serving your network. Would do you agree with that? Yes, totally. You know, I, I remember at the beginning when I was started working, I was really touching the middle. Um, uh, when I was starting my journey, it was like the middle. And then I started adding a lot of uh, top level. And I always felt like I, I've been a big fan of Robin Hood. <laughs> so I, I've seen, I think, all the uh, different uh, casting and different movies of Robin Hood is one of my favorite heroes. And so for me, it was always like, OK, I take from the rich, but I will give back to the poor. And so that's kind of one of my values. And um, not that I steal, but I receive from the gift, from the rich. You know, they pay me well. And then I make sure that, you know, the people that cannot afford my services still have a glimpse for me. And also when I'm speaking on seminars um, and, you know, I always make sure I have the same giving attitude, right, to the people that cannot really afford me personally. But if they then see me sometimes just for a picture or like for a minute, I always make sure I'm really there for them. I'm as there for them as I'm there for my celebrity clients. Of course, it's a different time level. It's it's a different format. But um, that love, that is one is my key factor, 
it must be felt by everyone, even if it's somebody who comes literally on the street and suddenly sees me like, oh, Marie, you know, I've seen you in so many movies. Can I please have a picture? Say, of course you can. And so because I'm always thinking that one second with me can change their life, you know, because if I would say no to that and thinking, oh, they they can't afford, you know, me paying thousands of dollars, I'm not going time giving time for them. That would be so wrong. So you need to be so present because my focus is reaching 500 million people and more. So I have to think, that, that can be through a free resources. It can be through a celebrity payment. But I have seen sometimes that I have this one client and he started with all my free resources. He is now literally 15 years later, he's a billionaire. Yes. So now he pays me super well, right? <laughs> but he started with free resources from me. Literally, he started practicing that 15 years ago. Right, so you never know, but it's always like giving back. I feel your brand has to give back. So when I was um, part, that back, you know, is there for me, right? So um, we give the royalties to a work, right? We give it to a children's organization. So it's part of giving back. And you have to always make sure that is a big part of your service. And not everything needs to be paid. Um, if people, and even if they pay, be more generous than what they paid you for. That is also one of the, the aspects of love, right? So if people say, like they sign up for something, if it's an online course, there will always be a bonus. There will always be like, Oh, you know, on top of it, I'll give you this extra. So be generous with your heart to your clients. And they will like, oh, we want to keep working with her. We want to be, keep working with him because there's a generosity of heart. And you do, of course, a great job, right? You do the best you can and you give the most excellent service you can. But that generosity aspect of it is so important too. Yes, and also all of those things mentioned also serving even the people at the bottom level of the pyramid. All of these things, generosity, they're just going to lead to more trust with the brand and brands are built on trust. Now, Marie, you are part of the new book, The Law of Brand Attraction. You have some incredible co-authors um can you tell us a little bit more about the book and your chapter in the book yes of course so um sammy is um, an old friend of mine and so she called me really at the last minute uh like i would love for you to be part of this I said yeah of course no problem and so um what we did I mean, she explained it, and I thought, like, this is a, a brilliant idea. So I love brilliant ideas, by the way. And um, so, and as, you know, she's a sister, so I'm like, of course I'm going to support you with this, right? And um, so she asked me for a chapter, and I, I really, it was 24 hours before the, the, the book would be published, and I said, <laughs> well, we have an amazing, we have an amazing interview with it, I think uh, half a year ago, why don't we take that interview? Why don't we, um, you know, transcribe it, send it to me, and I will, uh, you know, really redesign it for the book. So that's what we did. So it was overnight, literally, that it became part of the book. And what I talk about in the chapter is how I um, created my brand. And, and, you know, my brand is a very life connected brand it means it's very connected with me and my, and my life and what I have you know gone through um, and I explained how I actually got into the secret how I connected in with a bigger brand um, because one of the things I've seen in the beginning and I tell that some of my students and customers um, I say look you know sometimes your brand is not so big but being part of a bigger brand or connecting in with a bigger brand or connecting in with people that have bigger brands is, is key in the beginning, yeah? So I was lucky to attract being in the secret, to attract being published by um, 
very well-known brands already. Um, because even if you are a starter in something, and that's why the Law of Attraction, uh, Law of Brand Attraction is an amazing book because there are some very powerful people. There are some people that are, are you know, just, I would say, more recent uh, starting a professional um, company. So, and and still have already, you know, brought forward a brand, but perhaps not so known yet. But the fact that they're part of a book with someone well-known people is an amazing thing because that helps them. And then altogether, we made it a, a number one best international best-selling book. So then you're part of uh, something international, right? So even if you're local in your brand, it's always good to think bigger and to think then, uh, if you're local, I would say, think national, right? If you're national, think international. If you're international, think global. If you think global, or you want your your global, think interplanetary, you know, think, think cosmic. <laughs> so it's like, um, even if you're, you're serving local customers, being part of something local, international or national uplifts your brand, yeah? So I was actually explaining my journey in, in this, um, how I created my brand. But my brand is very connected with the life I've, you know, how I got from zero to hero. In, in, in a so how I got from being just somebody from Belgium to become an international global um, teacher and author. So I was kind of... Um, trying to uplift people through the through the chapter that, you know, I started from nothing also, right? It, nothing was given to me. I mean, I did not have the back uh, ground of business. My parents were not at all into business. I had no background of money. I had to always invest in myself. I never actually had investors uh, in my journey. Um, and really just giving the steps how I did it. That's kind of what the chapter is about. And you actually mentioned a huge, huge point. I myself am in the press and the PR world, and I talk about this all of the time, and it's so important, brand association and attracting big brand names to work with and collaborate with that helps to build your own brand and you just touched on that beautifully Marie you got into the secret movie a bigger brand than your own at the time which allowed you to grow and I think the value of your chapter is so important that you are touching on this point that when you associate with bigger brands and bigger names, it helps to grow your own brand. So I think that is a really, really important part. I'm excited to read your chapter. So my next question what will people gain from reading the law of brand attraction? Well, I think what they first of all will get is uh, stories and tips of, um, you know, different uh, men and women, um, how they, you know, very real stories, very real tips, like, People that just are in the business right now or started a business a while ago and immediately start building quite quickly uh, to become a strong brand. I mean, we all need some tips, right? And there are not so many. Um, I mean, there are books on branding, but then there this is a very real book on branding because there are business people, different business people talking about their growth in their brand and what they have done so it's not like one person talking about brand like a professor or you know um or a ceo or something it, it's these are small and medium business owners that together uh, talk about what they have learned about their brand and how to accomplish i think that is what is so unique on that book 
Yes, and everyone collaborating together, there's definitely going to be lots of tips, knowledge, action steps to move your business forwards to help you to grow your own brand. It's so, so important. I can see this book helping lots and lots of people. So do go out and get your copy of The Law of Brand Attraction. It's on Amazon or you can go to the law of brand attraction dot com. So that brings me to my last question, Marie. What's new for Marie? You're such a busy businesswoman. What is new? What are you working on right now outside of this project of the law of brand attraction? Because I know you have so many different exciting projects going on. I'm very excited. First of all, the 20th and 21st of June of 2020, we are... uh, launching the Global Conscious Women, where we are um, bringing 14 um, international best-selling authors and top uh, spiritual teachers, um, women, coming together to raise uh, consciousness. Um, So we are meditating together, we're having conversations together, so people can go to globalconsciouswomen.com for that. Um, And there's other... um, projects coming from that same uh, start. And so it's a startup now, so it's really interesting and very fun to do. Um, The second thing is I'm launching my own uh, podcast from June 2020 on called Magical Living, so people can find out about that. And I want to really talk about to some of my um, uh, peers and uh, in transformation, meditation, uh, self-help, and some celebrity clients and business people how they are creating a magical living for themselves. Because that's kind of a new brand I brought forward, is magical living. And um, I feel like it's so important for people to know, like, how did how did somebody else do it? You know, how did they create their dreams? How they were manifesting their dreams? And and there are so much magical stories, literally, how you met the person at the right time, how this fell in your lap. Of course, there's hard work behind every magical story, but, you know, that moment of magical uh, epiphany, right? Uh, what, did, what was that? So I want to talk about that. And then I have... a. a another book launching called the magical living journal like a journal where i bring people in a year through creating a magical living and a new book comes out in the fall uh called magical living a journey to an enlightened for a, a journey of an enlightened modern woman so that's a, an autobiography actually that is going to be launched so the, and we also launched at the same time a magical living membership where i bring people for a very small amount again that's for the people that feel they don't have that much resources, literally for an eight, like a ten dollars a month through a whole uh, program, a whole year, um, so that they really can live a magical life. And I'm teaching, of course, my own techniques and my journey and the insights I got through from my own journey to go from where I was starting at nothing, right, from small country in Belgium to become. Um, part of uh, becoming a million dollar brand, uh, how to do this, um, how to live a magical life, both on your um, abundance level, on money level, also on your health level, on in your relationships with people and also in your um, on your wisdom level. So these are all new projects that are coming up. So there's a lot, but hey, um, that's what makes it exciting. I just love your ambition, your action taking, the way that you are serving others. I'm really excited for the autobiography because there is going to be so many people that want to know your life story and your ups, your downs, where you have come from to where you are now. So can you tell our audience, Marie, how can people contact you? How can people connect with you? Yes, of course. So they can, of course, go to the website, mariediamond.com. And for sure, get your free energy report. They also can uh, go to my Instagram, Mary Diamond 8 
They can find me on Facebook, Mary Diamond Fans. There is a free Mary Diamond app that they can download. And um, they can also check me out on the Mary Diamond YouTube channel. So um, LinkedIn, I mean, there's so many uh, avenues where if you want to reach out to me um, and my team, we definitely can be there. And I love, um, you know, being interviewed. Thank you so much for that, Mark. But I also love speaking publicly. I'm a, an international keynote speaker. Um, you know, any way I can inspire and uplift people, um, I'm there. It's been my pleasure, Marie, and this is my second time interviewing you now. So I feel really honoured and it's my pleasure to interview you. Thank you for being a guest on the Brilliance Business Show. I've enjoyed a conversation with you, Marie. Thank you so much, Mark, and good luck with the next shows. Thank you so much. You have been listening to the Brilliance Business Show conversations with leading experts in business. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.